Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to on today's episode. Don't fuck with the final boss, Larson. Oh, man. Contrasting what was a sleepy promo on SmackDown, we had a couple of killer promos on Raw. Uh, a hell of a way to finish that episode it, last night. It was a very stark, very stark uh, difference between what we saw the close SmackDown versus what we saw throughout Raw, which was vital, energetic, urgent. You know, I think that was the hallmark of Raw last night, a sense of urgency that permeated from minute one all the way to minute 180. Yeah, man. You yeah. know, it was every minute felt vital and urgent like they had. It felt like every segment advanced something. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, which you can't necessarily say the same for SmackDown, especially that closing segment, which is just... I don't think you could trust Seth. Yeah, can you really trust The Rock? You know, and that so was like, all there was to it. I've seen and kind of agree with the criticism after last night's episode of, I kind of just want to see Cody Rock now. You know, well, like, seems it seems like what like, the feud is. It seems like a Cody Rock feud. That being said, oh, I can't wait for that match. That was awesome last night. Um, man, you know, the fact that it was shocking that they that they let Cody do the blood. I thought that was awesome. The Rock cursing up a storm, albeit being bleep. Maybe on Netflix it won't be. Maybe it will be. I don't know. Um, I feel like that's the, a WWE call, though. I don't know. I don't know. But the gasping from the crowd yeah. when when he said, don't fuck with the final boss, that was it was so palpable. They were like getting something really, really cool. Exactly. And that's, that's all we want in our wrestling. Just do some cool shit. You know, we've been saying for a while that uh, The Rock has been kind of being more or less funny heel rock for the most part. He goes out there, he talks his trash. And while there is like a, 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 a sinister subtext to a lot of what he's doing, we haven't necessarily seen that play out. Well, last night we saw that play out. Yeah. It wasn't just an attack. It was a beat down. Yeah. Busting yeah. Cody open. And I guess any idea is the rock is some sort of sleeper agent, the bloodline. You probably toss that out the window because you, you know it's one thing to take a little bit of a beat down from the Rock to advance uh, the idea that the Rock is firmly aligned with Bloodline, but I don't know if Cody would uh, take a beating to that extent just to get Roman even more comfortable with the idea that the Rock could be trusted and is working on side of Bloodline. At this point, it would make zero sense. It would make no sense because you go back to this moment. And uh, and Rock crossed several. He's crossed several lines with his promos, but that's one thing. Words are one thing. Opening a dude up and completely <clears throat> and totally, seemingly attempting to uh, to 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 beat him so bad that he's going to have a physical di disadvantage. Now we all know this is going to be a tactical error by the Rock, but of course, of course, um, <laughs> because that's how Cody rolls. But. Uh, yeah, no, it, it would be the idea that the rock is going to turn on Roman and, and be working for Cody is a little silly. It seems more likely that. perhaps if Cody does in fact finish his story, that rock is going to be, I don't know. So, you know, disappointed by Roman. Hey, I gave you everything you wanted. I gave you the bloodline rules. And yet, you know, we were not enough to counter the likes of, uh, you know, uh, perhaps Seth, perhaps Jay Uso, perhaps even Larson. Stone Cold, Steve Austin, and John Cena. Why don't we speak on that real quick? Sure. So uh, those who watched Raw last night may have noticed during The Rock's bloody beatdown of Cody Rhodes at the end of Raw, there was a shot of, of a production truck in the background that featured quite conspicuously the pictures. Stone Cold Steve Austin. What? We're it. John Felix Anthony Cena. Do, do, yeah. do, 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 do. And according to Russell Votes, that wasn't by accident. That's what this is what Russell Votes had to say. Quote, everything is done on purpose. Two weeks out from WrestleMania, the backdrop of these WrestleMania specific trucks. And there was a couple of images of trucks with WrestleMania graphics and pictures of wrestlers that are not Stone Cold or Cena. Last night would have sufficed sufficed. I'll leave it at that. So Russell Votes saying, no accident. That beatdown was placed. Or sorry, that beatdown happened in front of that truck with those two 
uh, wrestlers' images on it. Now, let me ask you this. We already know, given the people involved, that the main event of WrestleMania Night 2 is going to be an overbooked mess. Because you got the entirety of the bloodline, you got Rock, you got Solo, you got Jimmy. Yeah. With Roman. Yeah. With Cody, you got Seth. Oh, you can't dis- discount the idea that Drew McIntyre is going to get involved in that main event, too, because we saw him talking to Heyman in the background last night on Raw. Well, there's that, but preceding the night two main event is, of course, Seth Rollins versus uh, Drew McIntyre. Yes. We don't know how that's going to shake out. If if Drew McIntyre is able to enlist the help of the bloodline and Cody's nowhere to be found, and Seth, you know, I mean, they probably are going to take Seth, and let's be honest, Seth and, and, and Cody are going to take the L night one. We know that. Yeah. Um, but if if Cody doesn't sort of, you know, have Seth's back the way he expects Seth to have his and the way Seth has said, I'm going to have your back, then I don't know what Seth is going to do in that situation. But yeah, continue. It's going to be an overbook mess. It is. But, you know, it, at least as of right now, you got Seth, you got Jay Uso with Cody's back. You got the potential. I know Sami Zayn's got his own thing going on. Oh, wow. That deep. But you could. Let me go back to a year ago. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. You know, all the moves that Cody has made over the last year. It's endgame here. And it's an Avengers endgame. Yes. Yeah. It's the Cody Avengers, yes. Now, if they set something up night one, you and I had speculated on, because I think it's the Street Profits taken on Waller and uh, and mm-hmm. Theory. If they give uh, Grayson Waller uh, a Waller effect like night one, and yep. you bust out with Austin and Cena there, because obviously Cena's got history with... Uh, with uh, uh, theory and uh, you don't really need any justification for Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. So you get those guys out there. And uh, and maybe, maybe, hey, Cena and Austin, obviously both, you know, probably like two of the top three opponents, historically speaking, for The Rock, Triple H being the other one, and nothing precluding him from coming out either, which would be hilarious. Um you know, if they set it up where there's some sort of justification yeah. for them helping out Cody, uh, I mean, John, you know, John Cena gave him the hug and the and the hand raise a couple times, yeah. but there's got to be a little bit more motivation for John Cena and Steve Austin. You know, look, d- the the glass breaking, uh, co- leading into the finish of that night two main event might be like the biggest pop in the history of WrestleMania or, 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 or of WWE, but that shit's got to be motivated. You can't just get be. that out of nowhere. It's got to no. be earned to a degree, even if yes. you set it up on night one. I agree. It has to be earned because otherwise it, it just, it, 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 it goes into the realm of ridiculous and you run the risk of having this wild overbook finish with stone cold and Cena coming out to, in, to, to help Cody win to a degree overshadowing Cody finishing his story. Yeah. You know, if you got Cena and Stone Cold out there, the rock out there, you got three of the, the, the top stars in the history of the company. And yeah, maybe you have Stone Cold and, and, and Cena at the end of the match, of course, raise Cody's hand. He's got the belt. Oh, he's the new guy. You know, he's next in line of, of these crossover superstars and WWE, so on and so forth. But there's, there's a fine line to tread with the overbooked nature of it. Where you can get ridiculous to a point. Yeah. But if it gets too ridiculous, then you kind of just focus on the ridiculous nature of it. That's why when Mankind Beat the Rock, it worked because it was wild, it was overbooked. But all those stories were already all interconnected, and it all made sense for that to happen that way. If Stone Cold shows up for the first time in two years just to mess with It'd the be Rock, weird. It'd be it weird. It would be odd. It would be weird. Yeah. People would people would pop huge for it. Yeah, I know. Given their history, you know, like they don't like each other. All right, I get that. But let me ask you this: What would what would the situation need to be? Whether it's on a Grayson Waller effect or in some other way, shape, or form, what would be sort of a satisfactory way that you could set up in one segment, which would lead to the next night? Because you all sometimes all it takes is one really well written segment. So how about this? Let's predate WrestleMania in, in terms of motivating it. And they can get silly. They, Cody could have, like, you know, he's all stitched up from being all busted open. Maybe it's on SmackDown Raw next week, whatever. 
and he's asked, you know, hey, obviously, uh, do you feel like you're overmatched now with The Rock, the final boss, beating your ass to close Raw? And he just goes, what? <laughs> uh, do, do, I, do, 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 I, do I feel like I'm overmatched? No, I feel like The Rock can't see me. Oh wow! Okay, I yeah. feel like I feel like I I I I'm gonna be I'm I'm in good shape going into WrestleMania. Yeah, you know, maybe he could be like, you know, I've been reading my Bible lately, and I came across a passage, John three sixteen, but it didn't really do it for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need. He makes reference to Stone Cold and Cena. Right. Yeah. That yeah. he's, he's got on the phone with them. Done. Yeah. Done. He could do that. Yeah, that's really bad. Um, it is really bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, you, you could write something at WrestleMania. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how involved <laughs> they would sort of need to be for it to be like super motivated. But knowing that Austin's in the building and, you know, if The Rock disrespects <laughs> him in some way, shape or form, you know, he's like, hey, boy, <laughs> you know, I put you down back in 2003 you know, you need to stay down or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! Oh damn! Rock told me to back off. Nah nah. Nah nah. <coughs> oh, this tea is making me cough. I thought I was supposed to do the opposite of that. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> These pretzels are making me very thirsty. <laughs> Let's talk about CM Punk and uh, Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. Of course, Drew McIntyre has been trolling the living hell out of CM Punk on social media. It's Larson Double Mrs. Liquids. <laughs> I mean, this tea is making oh, me coffee. Yeah. I drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was good. What? what? Um, yeah, so very rarely in, in WD these days does it feel like we see this all the time, or we used to see it all the time in AEW. is like, hey, you got a promo segment, 20 minutes, do what you want. And you get a lot of people talking over each other. And sometimes it's good, but sometimes it's really awkward. This felt like, hey, you guys got 20 minutes to do whatever you want. Uh, here are some things that you absolutely positively shouldn't do, more so from a character standpoint. Yeah. Don't do those things. Otherwise, do what you want. This and you definitely. Got, and you got three talkers out there who are all really, really good, who know their characters, mm -hmm. and 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 know to how to advance the story they're trying to tell yeah. on the mic. Yeah. Gosh darn it! Talking about vital, urgent stuff. Yeah, man. It, it had the right amount of kind of awkward. That, that you, you watch it's like oh this isn't scripted yeah right yeah and all three of them especially punk and drew were barely keeping it together the when when cm punk when when drew mcintyre said how was the chosen one and punk said who called you that who what what paragon of virtue called you that <laughs> oh my and drew the smile on his face couldn't get any bigger. He did not expect that. No. There no. is no way he expected no. CM Punk to make a Vince McMahon reference. There no. is no way no. No. that happened in Chicago, mind you. No. no. That was absolutely a stroke of brilliance. It, yeah. it, it truly was. And uh, and I thought that, you know, Punk, it, it, honestly, you just you mentioned the, you know, the nature of how it seemed like it was set up. No way was this scripted. It seemed like they said, okay, it's it's standard improv stuff, right? Punk, do everything in your power without leaving the ring to get Drew into the ring. Drew, do everything you can to 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 give Punk shit without getting into the ring. And and then just go from there and set up and then Rollins is going to come out, and you're going to set up, you know, the the commentary thing. And these are, you know, three veterans who <clears throat> have amazing chemistry who are all just digging deep into what they have going on right now. Mm -hmm. Nobody's phoning anything in. They're all given excellent, you know, overall material to work with. You know, yeah. even CM Punk, who's on the shelf right now, has been trying to make the most of it. You know, there's been multiple reports of him showing up at NXT tapings, helping out mm -hmm. there, um, wanting to be involved, wanting now to be involved in WrestleMania. I think the only the only quibble I would I would have at all, and it's not even really a quibble, is 
the idea of him being able to be guest referee and not being guest referee, that match would be infinitely more fun with yeah. CM Punk as guest referee. But I totally understand as a matter of reality, there's a lot more to it than just counting one, two, three. There's physicality yeah. involved. And yeah. You don't want to risk that with CM Punk. Exactly. So exactly. him being on commentary and getting that last punctuating mark or the second to last punctuating mark of saying, I'm going to do what you guys haven't been able to do, what nobody's been able to do, and that's make you interesting. And then Drew McIntyre not wanting to let him get the last word. And instead, Seth Rollins hitting with a super kick and a stomp. And CM Punk being kind of like, oh, I, I like that. That's all right. I'm good with that. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was a magnificent uh, segment. Just front to back. It was great. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And, and it, it had uh, what the segment between Roman and Cody was lacking in basically yeah. every facet. Yeah. You know, they, everybody felt very into it, felt motivated to yeah. one up one another, one, one each one another, um, and and to really advance something. You know, and yeah, what was advanced is merely CM Punk's role at WrestleMania, but they do it, they did it in such an interesting way mm -hmm. that it was in, in, a, in a wildly entertaining way, mm -hmm. and it was everything that was lacking from the Cody and Roman segment. Yeah, and it's wild because that's our main event of I WrestleMania. Know. You know, that it is the night two like, main it seems event. Like, it seems like Cody's facing The Rock in the main event of night two and Roman's The Rock's tag partner. Let me ask you this. Why do you think that is? Why is why do well, you think they're not giving Roman the, the this, I'm going to cut Cody open moment? This this is the one thing I've thought about. It's not necessarily something they've hammered home. I don't necessarily feel like it's the subtext of anything, but this is the one justification I could come up with. And maybe the... It, Essentially, is that Roman feels like, oh, The Rock's got my back. Oh, I could cruise. He can check Easy. out. Mm -hmm. I can check out. Now, I wish it'd, it'd be more to the fore if that were the case, which is why I don't think it's the case. Mm -hmm. um, why, all right, Rock's content with, uh, Roman's content with The Rock acknowledging him. You know, as long as that's the case, sure, Rock. You could, you could be front and center. I'm just going to cruise another wink because I got you. I got the bloodline. This is this is a done deal. I'm guaranteed to win this. I'm not going to sweat it. It's interesting, yeah, because I, I I don't know. You know, I mean, look, if if there was, <clears throat> I agree with you. I think if that was sort of the thing, it would be a bit more obvious. Um, you know, sometimes as as fans of of wrestling, you got to sort of try to fill in the gaps ourselves and and understand yeah. this stuff. But from a creative standpoint, it is it is kind of bizarre, and honestly, maybe. I don't know. Maybe there's a disconnect in the creative situation where, you know, Heyman and Roman or so, you know, they, they schedule out these segments. Okay. What are the schedules like? This is when we have the rock, you know, he's going to do a surprise thing in Chicago, but we have him there. We have Roman on Friday and maybe the creative teams, you know, we've always heard that, you know, Roman and Heyman, and I think to a degree like Michael Hayes are the guys that are sort of, most concentrated on the Roman Reigns aspect of things. Mm -hmm. And maybe there, maybe there's just separate creative for, you know, maybe rock and Gortz handle rock Cody stuff. And then, you know, a different team handles. And it's like, Hey, you guys need, either need to bring it on Friday or you're going to risk getting upstage. And that's what happened here. I mean, yeah. I don't know if Brian Gortz is, is handling anything that has to do with Roman Reigns segments that don't involve the rock. Yeah. Maybe it's just a matter of, there's different, you know, cooks in these kitchens. And as long as they, you know, adhere to a certain through line, that is, this is our WrestleMania two main events, um, then they're sort of free to do what they want. And they just sort of didn't bring it on Friday and it was yeah. undercooked yeah. because it definitely was, especially compared yeah. to what we what we have. And I, I wonder if some element of it is the rock has more leeway to do stuff like that. And something like that for Roman is just out of character. I mean, if you think about it, it's sort of a standard, it's a standard bloodline setup with Roman reigns. He talks and he has other people sort of be his muscle. And that's just how it always kind of is, you know, like there's just not a lot of, it'd be nice if there were more twists and turns, but as Cody said last night, and as we said, yeah. They're in, we're selling WrestleMania now. Yeah. It's not like what happened last night was a big twist. It was it, just it like. It upped a the ante though. Yeah. It upped the ante. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I wonder if, I wonder if it's, if it's a matter of sort of 
how they're delegating things creatively. That's the only thing I can think of. I mean, of. that could be. And, and and one thing that's kind of been lacking, especially the last few weeks, is is exploring the dynamic between Rock and Roman. You know, and it seemed and it, it it like I didn't really feel like when the crowd was chanting Rocky on SmackDown when Roman's in the ring before Cody came out, it really like nothing seemed to bother him. Mm -hmm, yeah, he's just yeah. brushing everything off. It felt like, and and if that's his thing, because he feels like, all right, I got the Rock, the Bloodlines, arguably, well, now with the Rock's in there, he's final boss. Bloodlines stronger than it's ever been. Cakewalk here mm -hmm. for 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 me. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, then, then, at least subtextually make that the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 And, and that's I really what feel I, like they're doing that. You know. That's why I wonder if there is some sort of disconnect between the creative staffs, be. because it's like, well, if you're going to add subtext to Roman Reigns via The Rock, you guys need to write that in your shit because we're not going to write it for you. I, I you know, I, again, it's pure speculation on my part, but it does sort of seem like there's two separate creative visions going on at the same yeah. time kind of building to the same thing and it seemed like they were on the same page at the press event but even at the press event roman was kind of you know playing second to the rock i mean it's the rock you know it's it's you know one of the biggest names in wwe history and um you know and th there was that great moment where he acknowledged roman reigns and that sort of got left behind you know I it's know. like well that happened and there hasn't really been much else beyond that as far as a dynamic between the rock and Roman reigns. And that is kind of a shame. That being said, let me ask you this, uh, before we get on with our actual recap of raw, um, now that people really have seen what Cody rock is, how would you map out or where do you think this is going to be mapped out at some point? They have to give us rock Cody, right? I don't think that's necessarily like the idea behind this, but like, man, that's the match now. I know, I know, I know. And and as far as 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 they're going with the Rock Cody stuff, in every way, seemingly motivate a singles match, and not for that not to happen. I, people might be somewhat let down by it, but I would assume. The only two matches we're guaranteed out of the Rock is a one night one at WrestleMania and somewhere down the line, Rock Roman. You know? But maybe at some point they'll see, well, this this Rock Cody stuff is really, really good. Maybe we pivot. Um, imagine if it's a situation where Roman, despite having every advantage in a Bloodline Rules match, ends up losing to Cody. Rock gets pissed at Roman for dropping the title. He faces Cody. He loses two. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and well, have that going into Rock Roman. You know, they could do this. They could do this one of several ways. If Roman loses at WrestleMania, he could disappear for a spell. Yeah. And if he comes back as a baby face to take on the final boss at SummerSlam, mm -hmm. look, I, I think it's a WrestleMania match. I do. I don't know what Rock has in him in terms of, of matches. Um, <clears throat> and the longer you get out, the, the more wear and tear there is on your body just in general. Yeah. Plus he's got the heavy schedule. I don't know what his plans are with the WWE he calls himself a long gamer, which indicates to me, maybe they've got through, you know, three years out of this. I don't know, but, um, you could do rock Roman as early as SummerSlam. If you, if you want to juice up everything you got, yeah. you know, and make everything as, as WrestleMania level as it can be. There's also the Saudi Arabia shows as a possibility because you know they'd probably have be happy to finance the rock coming in as well um so you got rock roman possibly at SummerSlam, but this dude calling himself the final boss over and over again it's leading me to think okay once cody gets past roman that's one thing but there's still the final boss yeah. so you got to do cody rock you know if cody's a champion Maybe hell, I don't know. Maybe maybe Cody ends up losing it somewhere in advance of next year's WrestleMania, and Rock ends up with it, mm -hmm. and Cody has to beat the Rock for it, or he walks into WrestleMania as champion, and Rock comes in uh, as his challenger next year. Yeah. Um, but then I don't know where that leaves Rock Roman. If you do that in the meantime, or if you hold off on that, or if you hold off on Cody Rock, I don't know if everything has to be if everything has to be WrestleMania. We're looking at 42 before this whole thing is said and done, which yeah. Yeah. might be cool with The Rock if he's all in on, on WWE and they and they extend that $30 million to another $30 million or yeah, something like that down the line. Dollars. Yeah, exactly. And if, and if The Rock continues to do this level of work, you know, if we get heel Rock for 
three years. Yeah. And in the process, you know, secures Cody's spot as the face of the company, more or less, and then cements Roman Reigns' legacy, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, as an all-timer. That's that's not a bad deal. Yeah, yeah. It's not a bad deal at all. It's not. In the meantime, you would think that Rock, you know, it's one of those things where if Rock is set up merely, Rock's got to win something, if that's going to be the case. I don't know if it can just be a straight up, okay, because they're going to win night one, we know that, but he's not going to have a solo match. No. Let me ask you this. What, if, if the original plan was Rock Roman, or if like when Rock signed on and they're like, yeah, okay, yeah. it's going to be Rock yeah. Roman. Let's say like, you know, because I, I, I don't know. I still don't know that's the case. Yeah. Roman clearly was supposed to win that, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. You don't think that would have done a two-year Cena-Rock thing? Probably not, but I don't know for sure. Yeah. Because, you know, up until the Rock signed on in, what, early January? Mm-hmm. You got to assume the idea was Cody Rowan again and Cody wins. Yeah, right. Yeah. But Rock also referring to himself as a long gamer. Yeah. You know, makes me think that he might be, it might be a multi year situation for him. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah who knows? So, uh, anyways, hey, man, WrestleMania is coming up. We've got our big WrestleMania predictions challenge happening at WrestleMania. You could be the new Big Blue Predictions champion and be the owner of one of these awesome Big Blue Predictions championship hats right here. This is going to Muted Mayday, though. He's our current. Big Blue Predictions champion. You could win this by doing the WrestleMania Predictions Challenge. And the only way you can participate in that is if you've got the Friendo Club set up. It's available to everybody. Easy way to get there, too. We offer two different ways. Number one, become a YouTube channel member here at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. All you got to do is click join. It's $5 a month. Or go to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson and choose the Friendo Club set up there. That's $5 a month. Either way... Either one you do, you get access to the WrestleMania Predictions Challenge. On top of that, all of our bonus episodes that we've done in the past and our weekly bonus episode, FriendoCast, where Steve and Larson talk about no wrestling stuff. It's all just other stuff that we talk about, no yep. wrestling involved. Uh, and then we also get access to our question threads uh, for all of our episodes where we answer questions. So uh, be sure to check out the Friendo Club setup available via clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson or by choosing the Friendo Club setup over at patreon.com slash Steve and Larson. While you're watching us, if you could do us a huge solid, hit that thumbs up button. I don't know how many people we got watching live right now, but I guarantee at least a couple of them had done forgot. They forgot to hit that like button. So be sure to hit that thumbs up. Uh, and then, of course, uh, if you could also hit that subscribe button so you always know when we're live or when we have a new video up. Speaking of new videos, we've got another channel. It's called Friendo Club Wrestling, and it's where we do a bunch of short form stuff. We look at your hot takes and we do some wrestling what ifs just last night. <laughs> Perfect timing at eight o'clock uh, Pacific. Uh, a new hot take went up where somebody offered up the hot take. I think The Rock has ruined this WrestleMania build. <laughs> Coming off, coming off like the most epic rock moment in modern history. Uh, you know, we we dropped that one. So uh, be sure to check that out as well. We got a couple super chats here from Raven Wolf says, Gunther is headed into Mania uh, night one, 666 days as champion. Each of you present your Gunther theme inspired gear slash entrance for the champion. So 666, should he do some sort of devil situation? I mean, what else would would it be? Like John Lovitz on those old Saturday Night Live episodes yeah, where he's the yeah. devil, Just or like the, or uh, uh, David Putty. David, oh, there's with that's his a good New one Jersey too, yeah. Devils jersey on. Oh, that's good. Yeah, the devil. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Thanks for the super <gasps> chat. Steve Kuharski has now been a member for nine months. He's got the Friendo Club set up going on nine months. Says CM Punk is costing somebody at Mania, huh? You think Punk is going to get? He's got to get involved somehow. You don't like so. either guy, though. Is it is it one of those things where it's simply um, uh, his presence ringside is enough of a distraction to cost Drew the match? But then we saw Drew talking to Heyman. Is is Drew enlisting the help of the the bloodline to get the win here? 
a lot of, a lot of, yeah. I mean, a lot dude, of moving pieces. Yeah, you know, we came out at the end. Maybe it's maybe it's more involved than just what we saw last night. Because you're absolutely right. I think that Drew McIntyre is going to get involved in this. Yeah, there's there's a there's a lot going on there. There's uh, a lot of moving pieces. HDMS Kingslayer here uh, became a new Friendo Club member as well. Thank you so much for that. Enjoy the Friendo Club setup. Akon yes. with a super chat says, don't know about it, you guys, but I think next week's Raw should open with Rock and Roman, and immediately Cody comes out to brawl with them like Taker and Brock did back in 2015. Just a straight-up Attitude Era situation. Just, you know, everybody running into the a ring. going to pull-apart brawl, Steve. Uh, listen, I love my pull-apart brawls. Uh they should, it should be a situation where they, they have a pull-apart brawl that opens the show, and for the next three hours, they're all brawling backstage. Yeah, I like that. That's good. That's and it good. spills out back to the ring Yeah. Um, to close the show. Yeah, and it's like they have like little uh, like the little uh, stars like in GTA, and it escalates. Exactly, yes, yes. So eventually yes. it's like whatever it is, six stars or the most amount of stars. Yeah. So yeah. you know the feds come in, you know. Yeah, exactly. All that stuff. Remember you yeah, could get the flying good. tank? Yeah. <laughs> GTA yeah. 3, was it? Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, uh, Raw kicked off with CM Punk arriving earlier. He's got one of those Chicago Cubs titles with him. I told you, man, those things are beautiful. They look good. They're gorgeous. They look good. Uh, Cody comes out. He says, Chicago, what do you want to talk about? He says, I could say nothing. You get it. We're in the final, we're in the final awkward two weeks before WrestleMania. This is like literally what we said yesterday. He acknowledges SmackDown. that it's the awkward two weeks. He's like, oh, that, that's my excuse for how that, uh, that, that SmackDown segment went. <laughs> he really did, yeah. He said like we're in the our, awkward the final the, uh, awkward. WrestleMania senioritis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We're on cruise control here, people. Uh, he says the talk is over. Time for action is now. Action now. Last week on SmackDown, Reigns during his media round said a lot, especially on the Pat McAfee show. He referred to me on Pat's show as a politician. He would double down during our face to face. He said I was making promises I couldn't keep, and that got to me. This city of all cities should know when I make my bet, I keep it. Cody kind of he kind of spins a lot of wheels here. <laughs> he does. He just he just talks and talks and talks, and eventually, eventually. He gets the entire city of Chicago, or at least 15,810 that are in attendance, to all in unison point at that stupid WrestleMania sign. Larson, this was this was get this was approaching the cringe territory right here. Everybody. It was televangelizing, is what it, it was. It was. It was it was yeah, he was politicking for sure. Yeah. He was saying it's not about me, it's about all of us. You know? Yeah. Right. He talks about all the, the promises he made. He's gonna be some some dudes. Uh, best man at his wedding and is paying for the bachelor party. He's going to go to some kid's birthday. He he did pay for the wrestling club. To yeah, go to both cool. nights of yeah. WrestleMania. Just super cool. Um, uh, and uh, he says the reason he does those things is because he says, I pretend to be the champion because the champion isn't here. Mm-hmm. Referencing Roman. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he says, I, I, I respect you. I also hate you for your guts. It's fine if you hate me too. And that's what he talks about everybody pointing at the mania sign because he says i can't do it alone um it says uh, april 6th uh cody and and seth rollins versus the rock and roman reigns will you fight with me april 7th with me roman in a hopeful and hopefully a fair fight will you fight with me I, it'd be cool if he had done the howard dean yeah yeah at the end of this anyway he tells everybody to, to point at the sign rocks music hits and they had this great shot where it's from behind Cody as he's looking down the ramp and he's the lightning bolts and the rock shows up. And the great thing is like the way they had it lit, Rock looked like he just teleported in via lightning. He really because did. he just sort of materialized. It's like, oh shit. Honestly, I don't know whose idea the Black Adam entrance was, but oh my God, it works so great. It makes the rock seem like a supervillain. Dude, it's just got energy cackling off him. It's nuts. It's absolutely crazy. He's got Neutron that says the final boss everywhere. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so cool. So anyways, he comes down, doesn't get a mic, just faces off with Cody. Cody's ready to throw. Rock leans in, and I believe he said, uh, tonight I'm going to make you bleed. Yeah. Um, and uh, But he didn't say it into a mic. He just sort of said it kind of on the low to, to Cody. Mm-hmm. And then he gets back out. Crowd starts booing him because he didn't say anything to the crowd. But yeah. what a great moment. Nobody saw it coming. He wasn't advertised. Nope. Um, I, I thought it was a really, really great surprise there. Yeah, it was It was really well done. 
And they really looked that moment. I mean, they, they were just in the ring staring at each other so long, the crowd started standing, stand, uh, chanting CM Punk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. After yeah. doing the holy shit chant for a while. Yeah. Um, so then we see Ricochet warming up backstage for his match against J.D. McDonough. We go to commercial. We come back. Uh, Jackie's backstage mm-hmm. waiting for The Rock. He walks through the curtain. And she says, you know, hey, what you, would you whisper to Cody? And he just says, go ask Cody Rhodes. Mm-hmm. So you see the Judgment Day backstage. Rhea's getting on Dom for not giving her the heads up that he was going to go after Ray. Um, and then they start talking to JD. It's time to get your payback on Ricochet. And and Finn says, I'm sick of, of you two, Dom and, Rick, and uh, JD, being humiliated every week. Priest's like, calm down. I got a plan for the, uh, the odds to be in our favor going into WrestleMania. And Rhea looks at JD and says, just win, please. Mm-hmm. Dom's like, don't worry about it. We got this. Yeah. And they head up to the ring for JD's match against Ricochet. And as awesome as it was, JD couldn't get the win. Even no. with uh, even with uh, Dom getting up on the rope and and crotching Ricochet <clears throat> by you know hitting the the, the top Shaking rope the ropes, there, when, yeah. yeah, when he got off. Um, but uh, yeah, cool stuff. At one point, JD goes for uh, the devil inside, and Ricochet turns it into a destroyer, was which crazy. was fucking nuts. It was crazy. that was rad. That crazy uh, top rope poison Rana that Ricochet did was insane, dude. Seriously, yeah. Yeah, that stuff is awesome. Uh, so anyways, uh, in the end, of course, uh, Ricochet hits a shooting star press uh, to a standing JD. JD yeah. was like, he was he was like, oh, let me get my bearings here. And then Ricochet was like, nah, nah. Hits him with a standing, with a shooting star press crazy. as he was up and they both go down. Um, so yeah, Ricochet with a big win here. Along with that and Bronson Reed winning later on in the night. You think this is just set up for maybe the Andre Battle Royal? Or are they going to do add another match? Well, there's no other titles, so I don't no. know what they could do. But you know, Bronson winning was has just as much, if not more, to do. Well, I'd say more to do with Sammy's story as opposed to setting them up for an Andre Battle Royal. Let's say that won't happen. Ricochet's been getting some TV wins of late and a lot more TV time. So I, I, mean, I just feel like there's giving Ricochet some wins, doing yeah. something with them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if, even if you, even if they do the Andre on SmackDown, you know, you want people in there who have had a decent run as of late, not a bunch of losers who keep yeah, on losing matches. People who haven't been on TV for weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, so after that, we see Phil walking backstage with that Cubs title, and then uh, we go to commercial, come back. Jay Uso is walking backstage earlier. He's got a match against Nakamura. Uh, Punk's music hits. It's clobbering time in Chicago, Steve. He comes to the ring. Steve, would you like to be Phil? Would you like to be Drew McIntyre? You could be Phil. I'll be Drew. I'll be Phil. All right. Yeah. So CM Punk gets in the ring, says, I got a lot of things I want to say and business to get to before I get to that. Isn't it great to be alive in Chicago on a Monday night? Everyone is asking CM Punk if he'll be at WrestleMania. And the short answer is yes. My elbow was 100% and I'm not medically clear, but damn it, my mouth works. People have suggestions. Are you going to host? Uh, ten years ago, I would have said hosting was beneath me, uh, but I just want to he- uh, hear. I just want to be here in front of the people. Uh, people say you're great in the ring, commentary on the mic. What about referee? Is there a title match that needs a more impartial or the most impartial referee? A lot of people talking about me too. Even if they hate me, they certainly need me. And he directs his attention to Pat McAfee because of when Roman was on there. Mm-hmm. He says, Pat, you got yourself a little show. I don't listen to it, but uh, I do listen to the experience of drive through. talk about Cornette's podcast. The um, fuck, man? With, with like what? You can't listen to Going and Raw? Come on, yeah, Phil. Yeah, come on, Phil. I don't know. We ran him down a lot during the AEW days. <laughs> You're being impartial, Steve. <laughs> We're trying to be. Um, so he mentions Roman being on Pat McAfee's show. And he says, I sit back and wonder why Roman needs to bring CM Punk up. He earned the right to do that, and I respect it. But I think me coming back and climbing back up and Roman coming down, we'll see each other soon. Another guy, Seth Rollins. Me and Seth, we go way back. We don't see eye to eye mainly because he wears heels now, and he's magically taller than me. But uh, I hurt my arm. Maybe he earned that right. He referenced, oh, he says, kind of funny from a guy with two bad knees. Another guy who came back, who never said anything, The Rock. I like to think 10 years ago, I remember, is when he came face-to-face with the Second City Saint and that his arms were too short to box with God. Then there's Drew McIntyre. I haven't said a word. I handle my business live. He says, I'm not on the Internet all day, which is funny. I handle my business <laughs> yeah. live and in living color. If you have a problem, you face it like a man. So Drew's music hits. 
Yeah, that's right. So he comes out. Uh, so and punch but, like but, cut his music off. No one wants to hear that trash. Yeah. And he says, uh, I ain't medically cleared, but I don't want to match. So get your bitch ass out here. So Drew just sort of smirked and said, I'd love to get in that ring and beat your arse. But remember last time I stomped that little arm of yours because you deserved it. I prayed for it. It happened. <laughs> and then Punk says, are you a Scottish psychopath in a kilt or are you an internet troll in a skirt? Oh, it's 2024. You're going to get canceled for that kind of talk. No, this is perfect. You're in the ring injured less than two weeks to mania in Chicago. This is divine intervention. He says, I just realized I'm wearing this shirt. What bad manners. And, uh, well, and the and, rest of Mania Savior one, he rips it off, and it's the one with Punk, the, the, the tombstone with Punk's wrestling. Yeah, Mania right. Yeah. On it. So then Punk says, I ain't, never had, I ain't never had to put another man's name on a shirt to sell it. And that's when Drew takes it off. Yeah, he takes it off, and he says, uh, Oh, I struggled to get out of that shirt because of my biceps, something you never had to deal with. He says, You want to know the most ironic thing, the straight edge thing? You don't drink or do drugs, but you spend all your time in rehab. <laughs> Ouch, what a great line. Oof. He's like, and see, you don't like me, and I hate you, but as of now, I don't hate you. You complete me. In the gym, when I need one or more reps on weights, you can never dream of lifting. In your prime, I think about you, and the weight goes up. That chamber, I burst an eardrum early in the match. I think of you, and I get the job done. You're my muse, man. That was so good. So then Punk says, I can't hear you, so get in this ring and speak into my good ear. Come on, you coward. Drew says, I would, but you know, uh, but I know you people in Chicago, you probably have a weapon in there trying to take me out before WrestleMania. <laughs> so Punk lays down the ring and Drew sits on the announce table. Um, uh, he flicks the top part off yeah, and he yeah, says, yeah. Uh, he says, I know you want to be me at Mania bad, but you don't need to sneak in. I want you to have a front row seat. You think you should be in my position, but you shouldn't. And people are finally seeing what I have all along. Drew McIntyre has always been the chosen one. And that's when Punk said, oh, the chosen one? Who chose you? Say his name. <laughs> you have the balls to say his name, and Drew is trying not to laugh. He says, what paragon of virtue yeah. dubbed you the chosen one? Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. it's, it's here. The oh, yeah, you, 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 you want to be the chosen one? Which paragon of virtue chose you? It wasn't Chicago, was it? San Antonio, after the show went off the air, they chanted my name. And Drew says, get it out. This is great. You're still months away. I feel like a fan since I'm on commentary, since I'm on the commentary, commentary desk and you're only good at running your mouth. Why not be a guest commentator so you can see Drew McIntyre finally have his moment with live fans in a stadium. And then Seth's music hits and and it, it was it was as if they played the brown note for Phil, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like it's just overwhelmed with intestinal discomfort. Mm -hmm. He yeah. rolls his eyes. He gets on the knees and, and hits himself on the head with the microphone. So. <laughs> Seth comes to the ring. Um, Seth says, Chicago, welcome to Monday Night Rollins. Now we firmly establish whose show this is, has been, is going to be. I know it's an away game for me, punk, but if you're done out trolling each other, let's get to business. If you two morons had any brain cells, you know that you can't make changes to the match if you're not in it. But since you want to take everyone but the champ's opinion, let's pull Chicago WrestleMania 40. Drew, Seth, world title, should Punk be on commentary? So the crowd, crowd really want a referee. They started chanting referee, yeah. and Punk smiled at that. Seth says, I don't know if you know this, but that's uh, but that right there is his counting arm. So Punk counts with his left. Yeah. Uh, he gets on there, counts three. And then Pat says, was that a quick count? Uh, punk says, honestly, I don't think. Oh, sorry, you're Punk. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Honestly, I don't think I could uh, honestly be fair with these two dipshits wrestling each other. And Drew yeah. says, PG, brother. Yeah. Yeah, Punk trying not to laugh there. Um, Seth says, want to know what I think? And Punk just says, no. <laughs> Seth says, ironic because I don't think any uh, anything of you. Matter of fact, you haven't crossed my mind since the last time we were in the rink. I don't give a damn about you. You're a non-factor. You want to be on commentary or ref? It doesn't matter. You talk about everyone needing you, but you need me to have a moment at WrestleMania. I like commentary because the irony of Punk narrating my finest hour hasn't been lost on me. And truthfully, the way things are going, it's as close to a world title as you're going to get. Do what you want, but I want. But what I need you to do is stay out of my way. And Punk says, "Okay, everything, every it's decided." I'm gonna put my some cans on, sit next to my 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 buddy Michael Cole and Pat McAfee, do some commentary, and I guarantee you I'll do something that you. And he runs down Seth. You runs down Drew. Can never do. And that's make you both interesting. Hit my music. 
And Drew gets up and he's like, no, 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 no. You're not going to get the last word. You're not going to get the last word. Kill his music. He's I want to make one thing clear. The only thing I'm obsessed with is the title. You're obsessed with me. You always follow me and watch me on TV and social media. You're my number one stand. And Punk is just turning his back to Drew McIntyre. So Drew walks into the ring because Punk's already out. I like that Drew, like the repurposed a line, I think, from Eminem Stan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Yeah, yeah. Um, No, and I like, you know what I love about this too? We've talked about this in uh, it, it, with AEW when they do unscripted promos and how awkward they can come off because it kind of feels sometimes like people are not selling their opponents. Yeah. You also need to sell your own weaknesses. And Drew McIntyre understands his character strengths and weaknesses. Because for him to then, if this is all improv, and I'm sure that this bit right here was was planned out, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But him showing the vulnerability of being obviously obsessed with punk so much so that he looks kind of like an asshole saying, no, 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 stop. You're obsessed with me. You're the one who's my stan. Yeah. Makes him look weak. I know. But so much more interesting than if he's out there just trying to protect his own character, Mm -hmm. making him look like a badass, which is simply not interesting. And so selling that weakness is what puts Drew so far ahead of so many others. Um, I loved that moment from him because there is that desperation with Drew McIntyre that really makes him much more compelling, you know, yelling at CM Punk desperate for that validation. It, it was just that? a great moment. And again, when he's desperate, he makes mistakes because he walked yeah. right into a super kick and a stomp, stomp from Seth. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You're exactly right. Yeah. It's Drew's Good weakness stuff. and he doesn't quite realize it. Yeah. Great. Really great stuff from him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got Nakamura video package. He's in the main event tonight against Jay Uso. It says Jay Uso gets to go to WrestleMania 40 to have a dream match against, against his brother. It's unfair. Why does Jay's dream get to come true? What about my dreams? Tonight, uh, Nakamura is going to turn Jay's dream into a nightmare. Mm. Uh, after that, we had um, this. So th- this was kind of, this was disappointing that it was a really terrific Raw, really short on the women. Yeah. There was a really great Rhea Becky uh, sequence, which we're going to talk about. But this really short match right here was kind of like the only women's match on the card. And... It when you when you stand back and look at it, like SmackDown is sort of have like the women's stories kind of like to themselves. Yeah. Because once Nia Jax and Becky had their blow off last week, like Nia Jax was nowhere to be found this yeah. week. Yeah. Um, and that sort of illustrated that's kind of the only thing they had going besides Rhea and Becky. There was no Liv Morgan this week either, I don't think. No. Um so I understand they had a couple of long segments, but like, you know. And look, I'm not saying you get rid of necessarily Andrade versus Giovanni Vinci, but I feel like that maybe could have waited because the Liv Morgan stuff was actually getting kind of interesting yeah. with how she was, you know, handling all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. For a three hour show to only have one short women's match. Yeah. Well, you got to do better than that. Yeah. You got to right. do better than that. Yeah. And, and it does sort of illustrate, we've talked about this before, how like besides Nia Jax, not a lot for Rhea Ripley to do in the women's division. And because of that, they haven't really built anybody up. You know, you got Shayna Baszler, who was doing really good stuff with Zoe Stark, and they were like nowhere to be found, largely because they're a tag team. Yep. And so there's nothing left for them to do. Seemingly, they need to find stuff well, for the, them. The tag titles are predominantly, I know they're cross brand, but damage controls on SmackDown. They're on SmackDown. Yeah. And they're all wrapped up in the Bailey EO story. Mm-hmm. So yeah. and and it seems like whoever is going to challenge them, whether it be in a, a tag title match or involved in a six woman tag match, are mm-hmm. all on SmackDown too. Yeah, everybody's on SmackDown. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. I mean, as well as good as SmackDown is doing, telling that damage control story and making it a focus of the show, it's a shame that we don't get we didn't get the same focus on the women's division on Raw last night. Because, you, you know, the funny thing is, too, like the Candice LeRae stuff is really good. It is. You know, it's very simple, too. It's she's losing a lot and she just turns that corner. She realizes that ain't going to get the job done. So you got to buy into let's go ahead and cheat a bunch or and, if not cheat, you know, you got to be opportunistic. And then the push and pull within Indy wanting yeah. to help her friend. Yeah. 
but can't necessarily bring herself to actually do anything. Because mm -hmm. there was like a couple instances, let's just jump into this match, where a couple instances where Candice had the ref distracted. And literally one time, Indy was walking around the ring with her, her hand balled up in a fist, ready to punch mm -hmm. Ivy, but she yeah. couldn't bring herself to do it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good story. Really short match here. Candice LeRae ends up uh, playing possum, uh, fakes an injury. Uh, Indy walks over uh, to Ivy, like you said, does nothing. Candice then stacks her with a possum pin and puts her leg on the ropes for the win there in the corner. Um, and then afterwards, Indy refuses to raise the arm. Candice smiles, walks to the back. Um, and then we move on with the New Day stuff. But getting back to the women's situation, um, yeah, it's a three-hour show. Like, it's a three-hour show, and you give this, like, a two-minute deal. Um, the Candace stuff shows to me that they could write good stuff for anybody. And they've got a lot of women on their roster that kind of aren't being used right now in a significant way. Yep. You got to start putting pen to paper and writing for them and giving them yep. TV time. Exactly. Um, you know, the Andrade, Vinny Vinci stuff – that could have been look, and I it was a good match. It's a really it good, a match. good match. They're both really phenomenal yeah. wrestlers um, from that opening chop, <laughs> which yeah. sounded like a shotgun. Yeah. Um, but I feel like you could put that off till after Mania. You know. Yeah. I mean, if they want to get on uh, Andrade into the into the Andre, if that's the point of like giving these mid Carters wins, and I know he just showed up, he's just debuting basically or yeah, returning. Or yeah. Um, I mean, it's been since the Rumble. It's been two months, but they're taking their time with it. I get it. But something's got to give, and yeah. he doesn't have a story right now. No. So, like, use that time for somebody to give them a story, and if you're short shrifting the women's division, maybe do that. Yeah, agreed. A thousand percent. Uh, so after that match, we're backstage with New Day and DIY, and they're just kind of arguing, friendly arguing amongst each other about who's best. Um, like Champa says, uh, why are you called the New Day? You've done no There's nothing new about you. Uh, I believe it was Kofi asked him, why are you call yourself DIY when there's two of you? Um, and uh, Wood says, the only thing new is going to WrestleMania because you've never been good enough to get there. So they're just kind of, it's all kind of friendly trash talk. In the background, though, you see Drew talking to Paul Heyman. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll play uh, later on tonight and maybe yeah, at will. WrestleMania as well. So the Awesome Truth walk up. And uh, Truth says, wow, this is wild. New Day versus DX. I told JBL we're going to come down and be on commentary. And Mist just goes McAfee. And Truth says, Gesundheit. Yeah. So I can't wait. They go to break. And that match is next. Yeah. And uh, who said this here? Uh, NYC Snowman <laughs> says, uh, the tag match didn't, be that, didn't need to be that long if it was ending in a DQ. There needs to be a time limit for matches that, had, that end in a DQ. Like yeah. you can't go. I don't. I don't know how long this match went. It went pretty long. Yeah, it's commercial break. So, yeah. Um, but like you know, I kind of feel like seven, seven minutes. Oh, you're generous. I was gonna say five at most. Okay, yeah, that's even better. Shorter Especially the better, if the idea be with, with this. So I mean, the match is fine and all, but Judgment Day comes out and attacks DIY, so the match is tossed out. And if Judgment Day's plan, if Damian Priest's plan is to lay out. New Day and DIY, so they're not at 100% going into the ladder match. Like, what difference does it make if you do it two minutes in the match versus eight? Just get out there mm -hmm. and do it already. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe the idea is let them beat each other up before we get into it. They'll be more beat up. These are high-level professional wrestlers. It's going to take a minimum of 12 minutes for them to feel the effects of a match, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. If yeah. you want to go out there and attack them and lay them out, to A, prove a point, B, make sure they're not 100% for mania. Just go out there and do it. Yep, I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. Uh, so yeah, the towards the finish here, Champa hits a clothesline. Uh, let's see here, DIY hits a couple double teams on New Day, sends them to the floor. John charges Champa as Champa, sorry, holds the ropes open, and John hits a suicide dive. But then Judgment Day shows up, attacks DIY, so they clean house. Dom hits a frog splash on Gargano. Miz runs in. Takes it to everyone as Truth still commentating. Priest takes him out, points at Truth. They all gang up on him. And Truth is like, come on, let's go to a commercial. Let's go to a commercial. No commercial. They drag him in. But Truth gets up and fights them all off. Yeah. But then the numbers game becomes too much. Priest hits a razor's edge. And then Finn hits a nasty coup de gras on uh, on Truth. Mm -hmm. uh, but the the crowd was really popping for Truth. Oh, a huge pop. Huge pop they, for they, It's got to be him and Miz winning those. Winning, I guess at, at least, least the Raw titles, ones, yeah. huh? think so you'd think so 
Uh, they were backstage. Jackie's interviewing Cody. She asked, you know, about what The Rock said to him. And he says, Jackie, apologies to you and everyone. I'd rather not repeat it, but I, I will tell you, it's a promise he can't keep. Oh, Cody man. looking like an asshole here. Looking like a bit of a dickhead last night. Yep. Uh, and then we had uh, backstage, uh, Kathy asked Gunter about what Sammy said last week. And Gunter said, I would have given him my thoughts if he didn't storm out like a little child. After sitting on it, those words were empty. Sammy deep down doesn't believe. But we're in Chicago tonight. There's thousands of idiots out there who don't think he could beat me. I don't even think he could beat Bronson Reed tonight. And then Kathy says, you're going to scout that match. And he says, I don't believe he'll beat Bronson Reed. Thank you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I love Gunther. Oh, he's so good. Uh, then we got Andrade versus Giovanni Vinci. It was a fun match. It was really fun. They were chopping the hell out of each other. Sounds like Dude, shotgun that blast first one, off. That first one alone just left the gnarliest... Yep. I mean, that thing was bubbling up afterwards. Yeah, it was it was pretty great. Uh, Andrade predictably gets the win here. Back elbow. He's got a new finisher called the message. It's the uh, hammer lock spitting suplex deal. Mm -hmm, yeah. He gets the win. Um, and then uh, Rhea and Dom make their way through the backstage area of the arena because next, Rhea's got a promo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so they come out. She, uh, uh, Rhea says, Dom, I don't feel like I'm getting enough attention. I feel like a certain someone isn't giving me their full attention. Becky continues to fight week after week, and honestly, I could have gotten her attention attacking her, but no, I decided to be respectful. You see, now I'm impatient. WrestleMania is around the corner. Don't you think Becky should give me her full attention, Dom? So Dom gets on the mic. Of course, he gets a bunch of booze, and by the time he's able to say Becky, her music hits. Oh, oh yeah, she comes to the ring, says the man has come around to Chicago. Look at me coming out fresh as a daisy. Don't need to wait till after a 20-minute match to feel comfortable enough to face me like you've done the last month, Rhea. I can never do that to you. You don't wrestle anymore anyways, do you? Rhea says, why would I want to compete before the biggest match of my career? I don't need to wrestle every week to get these people's attention. I could easily just post a photo or a video online and watch these freaks eat it up. It's that easy. I don't need to prove myself in this ring. So then Becky says, listen to yourself. That's the problem. We both have two different interpretations. A champion to you is posting your ass on the internet for attention. To me is busting my ass in the ring to prove myself. Here's the thing. There's always someone newer, younger, and hotter, but it's about skill and merit and survival. It's about clawing back and fighting through not being the chosen one. If you haven't experienced that yet, uh, sorry, you haven't experienced that yet, but at WrestleMania, the man will give you a new experience. So Rhea says, you're right. I get it. You're a survivor. I can't take it away. It reminds me of something you're a cockroach you see you're hard to kill but it's not impossible at mania i won't take it that far because i want to leave you alive so you can sit on your couch and watch what i do best sit next to your daughter rue i want to listen i want you to listen uh to her call me mommy this makes becky very angry it does yeah she says listen to me that's your one pass mention my daughter again and those are the last words you ever say you think that's a fun line to throw out it's not funny to me my dad never got to meet my daughter. I know he's proud of all I've done, but I know that he's mo what he's most proud of is the mother that I've become. This may be a joke to you, but it's not to me. That title may be a joke to you, but it's not to me. You say you didn't attack me out of respect. There's nothing respectful about you. You know, when you throw the first punch, there's no going back. At WrestleMania, neither of us will be the same again. You know, I'll be honest, man. Same thing with Chad Gable. And look, you're a family guy. I'm a family guy, right? I got yeah. kids. There's nothing that puts me off more than when like a character is like, <gasps> how dare you use my child's name? How dare you say something about my child? I'm a parent. <laughs> like, I'm like, mm -mm, nope, nope. You're going to lose. I want you to lose now. <laughs> you need to go home and be a parent then if that's going to be your attitude. <laughs> Develop some thicker skin. Look, everybody's got kids. Rhea's going to have kids one day. Everybody's got kids. You know, like, wh yeah. who cares? Chad Gable with your crying daughter. You shouldn't have brought her, you know? They get all emotional about it. I know. Mm -mm. Nope, you're the past now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that shit. And I'm, this, I'm a family guy. Yeah. Somebody no, said that you. about my kid. I'd be like, okay, cool, right on. I'm going to whoop your ass now. But, you know, that, I wouldn't get all emotional. No, no, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. So they, they start kind of talking crap. Uh, Dom pulls Rhea back. And then Becky, whoop -ha, punches Dom right in the face. There's a great slow mo clip going around social oh media. Oh my it's gosh! Fantastic. Hey, he ate it too because he got like he didn't he sold it, but like 
that shit probably would have knocked me out. <laughs> yeah, he didn't I mean, get rocked, that but that, that, that punch connected. Yeah, really. You see jaw, jaw bone going one way, head going the other way, you know? Right, yeah. Um, so uh, Rhea throws Becky into the ring post, goes to check on Dom. Becky comes back and dives into the steps on both of them. So officials come down, break it up. Uh, Rhea kind of jumps back into the fray. More rests out to break it up, so. Yeah, pull yeah, apart. Good, f- effective segment. Yeah, effective it was good. Segment. It was good. Yeah, but yeah, Rhea, Rhea bringing up the kid and Becky going crazy. It's like, ah, oh, Becky doesn't hit no, with Steve. Doesn't hit with me. No, nah, man. Uh, so uh, after that, we see Sammy walking backstage. She runs into Chad Gable, and Chad says, uh, "Hey, I want to talk about last week." And Sammy's like, "What's there to talk about? You said what's in your heart. I can't beat Gunther. It's fine." <laughs> and then he goes off on a ch- tangent, and Chad says, "Sammy." Tonight's not about Gunther. You got Bronson Reed. He wants to, this is what Gunther wants. He wants to ruin your focus. You need to focus on the task at hand here. Get your head out of your ass. And Sammy says, you're right. I know what I need to do. I appreciate you saying that. (laughs) Sammy's a mess, dude. Absolute. And then he takes his L to Bronson Reed. (laughs) Because that's because Gunther's standing on the stage. Yeah, man. Take one step down the ramp. He's just standing there smirking and laughing at Sammy. And that's enough to get in Sammy's head. It wasn't like Sammy set up to win, and rather than focusing on beating Bronson Reed, he looks over at, at Gunther smirking at him and gets irritated. And then when he eventually goes for the Haluva kick, he runs into a boot from Reed, follows with a tsunami to get the win. Mm-hmm. Sammy, yeah, he's man. in your head. Yeah. Oh, big time. Man, this is the thing that kind of bums me out about all this, though. So, like, I don't think they're going to do a big, like, Rocky Three montage, training montage with Sammy and Gable. But clearly, Gable is going to be the guy that's guiding Sammy oh, at WrestleMania. Gable needs to turn on him. Sammy needs to be on the verge of beating Gunther, and Gable's like, not, you're not going to be the one that beats Gunther. It's going to be me. Dude, God, I hope you're right about that. I really do. I, I, I sincerely hope you're right, because the alternative is there's no way they're going to have Sammy lose if he's got Gable guiding him, and he's true to that. Sammy's going to win that goddamn match. And that's going to devastate me because I don't I want know. Gunther to no, win, to lose. Gable's going to turn on him. Oh, I, I think you're wrong about that. I think you're wrong. I hope, I hope you're I'm right. not. I hope I'm right. I, I hope you're right, but I think you're wrong. <laughs> oh, it makes sense. Man. Gable's so desperate to be the one to beat Gunther. You know? Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, it makes maybe. sense. He, he's he sees Sammy's... him right on the verge. He sees him right on the verge. Yeah. Then he turns on him. Boy, I hope you're right about that. Wouldn't put money on it, though. Anyways. Um, not, not even a, a, a chicken soft taco meal at Del Taco. Just you and me. Oh, yeah. We have that unfulfilled uh, bet from the uh, half-court line, don't yeah, no, we? Yeah, made a half-court shot. At yeah. Oh, boy. Well, we'll try again today. Um, but, uh, but yeah, would I be willing to wage a number? What was it? Number seven, I think. Is that what it is now? Is it number two? It used to be, used I to be was, number two. Oh, no, it was number five. It was number five. Number five now. All right. I, I always thought it was like, I ordered a number two before, but it was just, it's the two taco meal. And I ah, got that confused with the actual number. Gotcha. So I got this like awful, like beef burrito. Like they didn't even have cheese in it. It was horrible. Wow. Yeah. Hey, Del Taco, they got their, they got their misses as well, man. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. They do. Anyways. They do. Uh, so uh, Jay Uso's backstage. He says, Shinsuke talking about how my WrestleMania dream going to be a nightmare. Problem is you've been sleeping on me too long, but tonight you're about to get your uh, uh, whooped, oos. And then uh, Solo appears with Jimmy. You know, Solo, according to the graphic I saw on Twitter, 0-34 since taking 10 since beating Cena. There's a curse now. You beat Cena, you lose. Happened to Austin Theory too. Austin Theory as well, yeah. Yeah. I think they just sort of realize that Solo's not the guy now. They tried to make him the guy for a second, but I think they just realized he's not the guy. Uh, so he appears with Jimmy out of nowhere. Jimmy says, no yeet. And then him and Solo walk off. We got some Pat Telestrator action with Becky attacking Dom, which is great. And then backstage, Sammy's pissed off. And Chad says, calm down. Sammy says, I let him get in my head. I knew what he was doing, but he's still got in my head. How did I let it happen? Chad says, this is what he does. I've been telling you. He plants these seeds. He was, I was in the ring with you. Here's the thing. Let me pause right here. Gunther's thing is beating your ass in the ring. It's He's never been like, I'm going to play mind games with you. You know who's in Sammy's head? Chad Gable. Ooh, yeah. 
Yeah, he's sort of feeding Sammy this bullshit about Gunther, isn't he? He's going to turn on him. I'm telling you. Man, I don't know. I hope you're, God, I hope you're right about that. I hope you're right about that. Anyways, uh, yeah, he says, I was in the ring with you. You showed me resilience, and you're one of the best I've been in the ring with. He beat you mentally with those doubts. If you want your hand raised at WrestleMania, you need a different approach. If that's what you want to talk about, then we can talk. Uh, thank you. He didn't say thank you. No. No. Uh, so we get a recap of what happened earlier. Um, and then Jay is uh, at gorilla position waiting for his match. Seth walks up to him and goes, ah, something doesn't feel right. Cody and I, we got your back. Go out there and get that W. So Jay says, yeet. Yeet. Music hits. He comes to the ring. And our main event, main mm -hmm. event, Jay Uso. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Against Nakamura. Fun match, just not that long. Because they had this entire post-match beatdown uh, bit they had to do for the last 10 minutes or so. Yeah, it was. I think this ended at 7 till. And yeah, uh, and yeah, and I was like, oh, there's some shit that's about to happen. So, oh, yes. uh, uh, sure enough, uh, we had so uh, Jay hits some right hands yeah. and uh, gets the eat punch, super kick by Jay, uh, hits a spinning insiguri, misses a hip attack. Shinsuke sets Jay up with a sliding German suplex to get two. Nakamura's on the middle rope with a knee, but Jay moves. Nakamura hits a knee to the back of the head, and then Jimmy hops the barricade, as does Solo. But Seth and Cody run down and they attack him. So Cody and Jimmy fight to the back. Seth sends Solo into the post, dumps him out. But then Drew runs out, attacks Seth, hits a future shock right on the floor. It was nasty. Yeah. Um, Jay uh, looks at Drew. Uh, Nakamura. Uh, anyway, he ends up hitting a spear on Nakamura to get the win. So Jay Uso is the win. After yeah. the match, backstage, Cody is still taking it to Jimmy. Cody throws Jimmy out the doors and attacks Solo because Solo shows up. Mm -hmm. but then The Rock appears. Attacks Cody from behind, slams him into a trash can, throws a trash can at his head, throws him into a road case, starts screaming, how do you feel, boy? How do you feel, boy? He throws him into a metal guardrail, hits him again with a trash can, spits at him, sends him outside. It's raining outside. Very dramatic. Oh, it did so much to add to the atmosphere. It was great. The Rock looks at the camera, says, it's perfect. He didn't say anything, but you got your attention, you piece of shit. You're talking to the crowd. Uh, he attacks Cody, boots him around, throws him into a bus, says, world, look at your hero. Mama Rhodes, look at your son. Rock has a special gift for you. Throws Cody into the bus, attacks him more. You want to know I'm the final boss? Did you think he would let, did, did you think he would let this piece of trash talk a shit to everybody, to Mama Rhodes and Cody crybabies? Didn't have to be like this, but it is now because of him. He stuck his nose in the Rock's business. The prophecies come true. Look at you. Cody's busted open. He's bleeding all over the place. Rock says, Mama Rhodes, look. And he pulls out a custom Mama Rhodes weight belt mm -hmm. with Mama Rhodes on it with the Rock's logo. He wipes the blood on the belt and holds the bloody Cody to the camera. Your daddy, your daddy talked about hard times. He didn't know about them, but you're going to learn about hard times. I'm going to learn you about hard times. This is what happens when you fuck with the final boss. And then uh, he says, it didn't have to be this way, but now it's the only way. Oh, man. Oh, boy. I thought he was going to toss him over the overpass thing. <laughs> I thought so, too. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, they did a shot where you see it, and they walk down a little further. I'm like, oh, do they have, like, a thing set up or something? Crash Maybe it's, like, a lot. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, it was, yeah, it it was, was good. Awesome. I, I do like that. Uh, Maybe this was intentional. Maybe not. Where the part of Cody's bus that The Rock threw him into to bust him open was right where Pharaoh was. Oh, shithead. Right on the door. Sorry, shithead. Right on the shithead. door of his bus. Don't call him Pharaoh. Call him shithead. Sorry, apologies, Rock. Yeah, man. Oh boy, that was a that was an that epic was way to to end uh, end Raw there. Good yep. stuff. Definitely Would you like was. to answer some questions? Sure, let's answer a couple questions. All right. Uh, first up, we've got. Hold on a second. Gosh darn it. Holding. It. Holding. Oh man, we got a bunch here. Uh, Ryan Gorman says, "How do you think the draft will be formatted?" Is it going to be like classic all talent available deal or more like a keeper draft? They really should do like a keeper draft, do you know? Keeper. Each brand gets to keep five people. Yeah. Um, JR Jr. says if The Rock is the final boss, who is the final friendo and how would you they, how would their entrance look? Who's the final friendo? Bill Friendo. Yeah, Bill it's Friendo. our boss. It's Don't our know boss, what he looks Bill like. Friendo. Don't know We've he looks never like. seen him before. No, I said he communicates with Zoom, but no picture, no video. Yeah. His yeah. voice almost sounds like he's in witness protection. Yeah. As Hey, look, as long as those direct deposits keep coming in. They keep coming. The money keeps coming in. A cool $300 every week. I'm satisfied. Yeah. I'm well, happy I mean, with that. It'd be cool if it was at least $325, but it's something. 
<laughs> Maybe in 2026 we'll get that we raise. We can hope for. We can hope for that. What eight uh, percent raise, or whatever it is. You know, part of it is we're only getting 300 a week now from Bill Friendo because the likes aren't what they need to be. So you need to hit example, that like button. We got over a thousand people, yet only 270 likes. We got a that thousand. Be oh double. my god, we got over a thousand people watching. What's up, yeah, everybody? Hi, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we How many likes do we have? have? 270. We need double that. What? No Bill way Friendo's... we're getting that, that meager 8% raise in two years. He's going to dock our pay. I know. We're going to be down to 250, Steve. Oh, no. Whatever <laughs> likes we have at the end of this video, maybe that's what our pay will be. So if you get up to 600, maybe we'll get to 600 a week. If it stays at 270, we're going to get go down to 270. It's hard enough oh, with dude. 300. Times are tough, man. We know. They are we, really Bill tough. Friendo has learned us about hard times, Larson. You got that right. Tell you what. Uh, Jonathan Vieira says, this is a great question, by the way. This is this is like question of the week so far. Uh-huh. What are the eras in the 10-year history of going in Raw? This is wow. kind of easy. We got well, the, Dan, eras, the Dan era. Yeah. Kicked us off. That was the beginning. The uh, weekly era. Yeah. Where it was like one podcast a week, no Dan. Yeah. Then the Patreon era, where we started trying to do this full time. That's we started doing a video every week, like news brief. Uh, what was it? What, yeah. what we used to call like the news episode, the dirt sheet, or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Very generic. Yeah, um, very generic. And then of course, office era. Office era, 2018 to 2020. There was a pandemic era. Yeah. You know, like everybody had, and then there's now the uh, the modern era, which yeah. is where we got the friend. It's the Friendo Club setup era. Friendo Club really. setup era. Because like on Wednesdays we do it here from the studio. We do all the Friendo Club stuff on Wednesdays. Uh, so that's where we're in. right now. We're in the Frendo Club setup era. There we go. Yeah, man. Uh, Cameron Bordalazzo asks, when's, "When's the last time you had an epiphany?" <laughs> oh my God, these are great questions. Last time I had an epiphany. I had a small epiphany last week when I wasn't shooting well. I was like, "Ah, I understand why it was." I'm not keeping okay. my shooting arm straight. What you gonna? What, what's your goal for today? For the three-point contest. Oh, uh, my goal for today is not to hurt my foot any worse. Oh, yeah. How is your foot? It's fine. As long as I keep it stretched out, it's fine. Okay. All right. So that's it a win for you? Up. Yeah, yeah. It'll be fine. I'm, a, I'm not going to wear those same shoes. I'm going to wear my KDs probably. Oh, double KDs today. Double KDs. Nice. Uh, see if that makes any difference. I'm going for 15 today, man. All right. I was feeling, but you know how I get early success is a choke job for me, you know? Yeah. I need I need a pace. I need like oh, I go two for five on the first rack, second rack maybe I go three for five. Whoa, holy crap! Now I'm at five for ten. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and then if I can if I can get like four for five at the top, oh man, Feeling I'm good. doing well. Yeah, Feeling good. Coffee but I can't do four for five on the first rack. Then it falls apart. Falls apart. Yeah. Lucky if I pressure's on at that point. Uh huh. I really yeah. do awful to begin and warm up towards the end the other way around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think my Coffee. record is fourteen of yeah. twenty five. So I want to be. I want to get to fifteen. That's pretty good. Kaufman yeah. here says plantar fasciitis. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. I read up on the symptoms and it matches everything I got going on. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Kaufman says I got double plantar fasciitis if I don't stretch my feet. Oh wow. Yeah. Dude, sense. today I've got to stretch. My back yeah, was I, fucked. I can't believe. Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, let's see here. John Hosey says, "Give me Larson in a three-point contest." All right. Hey. Hey, John odds Hosey, are odds, odds are in your favor, boy. I've been John Hosey, put that money down, dude. <laughs> I'll take, I'll take that bet. I'll do it. What's the, what's the fellow that's uh, betting on his own shit? Oh gosh, <laughs> the dude who's gonna be out of the NBA soon. Oh my god. Apparently, I saw a thing, and I don't know if it's accurate. He bet that there was an eighty thousand dollar bet on the under for his his uh, his stats, and it paid out one point, almost one point two million. Oh my god. Jeez, dude, man! I think he's making. Wasn't he making? He's like making four hundred fifty of the year or something like yeah, that. He's yeah, like making. Yeah, but apparently, like he, I, a couple of years ago, he was doing. He was on a podcast talking about like stock trading and oh, crypto, crypto and stuff like that. Stuff yeah. like that. So. I saw that. Yeah, that dude's big into money. Um, let's yeah. see here. Primetime Rambo said, "At this point, which is worse, WWE version of ECW or AEW version of Ring of Honor?" I'll say I'll say the WWE version of ECW because in no way and they could do it. I get it. Did it did it really channel the spirit of what ECW actually was? Mm-hmm. Whereas I feel like 
what AEW Ring of Honor is, is just it focuses on wrestling, and that's kind of what it, Ring of Honor was, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's worse? I don't know. It's hard for me to say anything's worse than WWE, CW. I know there's people out there who are like, oh, yeah, it's got its charm, and I'm sure it does, but... Uh, Blind Mute here joined the Friendo Club, got the Friendo Club set up, and dropped a super chat, says, I just joined, been listening for about two years. Blind Mute, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Blind Mute 22 says, I just joined. Appreciate it so much. Thank uh, you so much. Uh, Donald C. Man here says, so is Triple H bringing back blading, or was this another clause of Cody's special contract when he was brought back? If anything, it was The Rock. Yeah. The Rock gave it the, let's do it. Yep. You know, that's got to be something really cool, because, you know, Triple H, Triple H just wants cool shit, right? Mm-hmm. So if The Rock can show up and throw some weight around and say, yeah, we're going to bleed, just let, hey, if, if you, Bob USA Network has a problem with it, have him call The Rock. And yeah. Triple H probably like, that's cool. Right on. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. I'm down with that. Uh, Samuel Raja asks, how does next week's Raw top this Raw? Uh, what if Cody makes Rock and Roman bleed? Oh, there you go. There you go. That's a good one. Cody and Pharaoh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like he unleashes Pharaoh. Yeah. 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 That's good. Not, not Cody busts open Pharaoh. No, I'm not saying that. I know. I was going to say he gives no, no, shithead a crossroads. So. That'd be horrible. <laughs> yeah. That'd be terrible. Like Rock brings his like pit bull. And <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you want... Pharaoh versus Rock pit bull. That'd be horrible. I don't want to see that. Why'd you bring? Why'd you bring another dog into it? I know. Well, he asked the question. How about you... this? How about this? No, it's not Pharaoh. Cody finds the wrestler that has the dog in him. Braun Breaker. Oh, Braun Breaker versus Rock's Pitbull. No, no dogs involved. <laughs> Gosh darn it! I made a mistake. Braun Breaker dog, spears a Pitbull. <laughs> That'd be outstanding. Dog goes. Arr, arr. <laughs> yeah, I just speared that dog. <laughs> you know, because he's been in his lab trying to figure out how to meld, uh, like yes, or trying to I infuse know, I know. dog best DNA. He, best he's gotten is 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 having to squat the poop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, on Johnny Gargano's lawn. Yep. <sighs> Landmines everywhere, man. Yep. Uh, Elemental Giant says, "What other brawls would have been enhanced by being in the rain?" Oh, good question. Oh, when when Rock when Rock tossed Austin off the uh, oh the bridge the, the river. bridge yeah 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 that was good that'd be good. I mean, I guess any any pull apart brawl is inside the arena if it just started raining. It rain inside the arena. Oh, yeah. that's good. I like that. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Doc Hensler here asked, "Does Bailey come out to her old theme in the wacky, wavy, inflatable tube men at WrestleMania?" No. No, I don't think so. No, that's a step backwards. That's a yeah. step she can never go backwards to that. I think there's a story they could tell. She gets hit lead. in the head really hard. <laughs> that's one tack to take, but there's a story they could tell that could that could lead back there. But it just to do it for the the for mania for a pop. No, I think that's a bad idea. Patrick Cheeseman has a great question. You guys got great ones today. Who or what is your final boss? I mean, we mentioned Bill Frendo, but is there a personal final boss? I think you know mine, Steve. What's that? I think you know mine. Uh, abs? Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, Dave Matushek says, with radio host... Scott Spears inducting Thunderbolt Patterson this year. Who else outside of the wrestling realm would induct the other inductees? Oh, I, did, of I didn't know they they announced that. That's cool. I didn't know that either. Um, who would induct you into the Hall of Fame? Other than you? Yeah, Hilton. Wow. Oh, interesting. Well, you're you know your own final boss. Yeah, greatest rival. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joe, the meme maker, what could you deal with more? You have to hang out with the rock all day, do his workouts and have worldwide fame, or you have to hang out with Cody for the day. You're essentially running for office and doing WWE media all day. Oh, you'd have a field day with the rock. Oh yeah. I'd learn all sorts of new, uh, workout tips. There. Yeah, yeah, dude. Absolutely. 
I probably throw up several times at keeping up with them, but oh yeah, right, fun. yeah, yeah. Uh, I would, I'd like to hang out with the Rock, but on his cheat day. Yes, because you've seen the spread brownies. on his cheat yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Time War here says, if you two were in a three-way promo battle with another wrestler, which wrestler would you dread the most to be on the mic against? Ooh, uh, probably, probably Punk. I don't. If Cena can, Cena can like break me down. That wouldn't really bother me all that much. No. I'd be like, yeah, okay. But Punk could probably say some things that are pretty rude. Yeah. Because he says it with such like a mean look on his face, too. Yeah, he does. You know, it's like a it's like a like a disappointed dad, but like kind of an angry one. Yeah. And it's not quite yelling, but it's very stern. It's very stern. Yeah. Like it cuts. Cena would be like, look at all these people out here. They don't care about you. I'm like, yeah, I haven't given them a reason to. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Cena, Cena would very much be disappointed dad. Because like some one one thing that Lacey has mentioned recently is when her and I ever get so she brings up this example, you know, like if you're going to the store mm -hmm. and you get home and the realization is like, oh, we're out of milk. Well, I was just at the store. Why didn't you tell me when she throws that at me? Why didn't you tell me we're out of milk? I just say, I know. Right. It's crazy. I double down, I lean into it, and yeah. then she laughs, and it's hard to get mad at me for that. Yeah. Um, I feel like with Cena, that's what I would do. He'd be like, look at all these people. They don't care about you. I'd be like, I know, isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? Help me out here, John. So you kind of do the, the LA night thing where just, everything bounces off. I feel like I'd be okay with Teflon, but with CM Punk, it might be a little bit different, you know? Yeah, you know, LA night would be tough against, not because I'm worried about he, his insults, I'd be hard not to start going, yeah, right back at him, you know? <laughs> I would have a hard time not laughing at his boomer terminology. Exactly. I'm like, bro, I'm older than you. Why is it my terminology is more up to date? I know. You can't say keister? Keister. keister. Keister, really, old man? <laughs> what are you talking about, Keister? Like, do you just watch, like, uh, my TV? Maybe. Like, do you just watch, like, uh, Barney it's, Miller reruns? It's all, it's all Matlock all the time. Yeah. Uh, Jesse Helsey says, I've been loving seeing Punk back in Dabba Dabba E. Do you think AEW dropped the ball with him? <laughs> or was it just a fit that was never going to work? It was a fit that was it never going to work. It was never going to work. Because I kind of feel like the Phil wanted to end up back in WWE anyway. So They gave him the ball. They were like, this whole oh, yeah. ball is yours. The collision, yeah. you do whatever you want to do. Yeah. It was a bad fit, man. It was a bad fit. Uh, let's see. Uh. A couple people asking about Gable Cost and Sammy, the Intercontinental title match. I'm not the only one who sees it. Oh, uh, no, dude. And I, look, I hope you're right because you make some good points. You make some really good points. You make some really good points. Blake here says, what manager should Cody recruit to deal with Paul Heyman? Uh, oh, wow. What manager should Cody recruit? Arn Anderson. Oh, the Glock. Yeah. Yeah. Also, in case the Rock busts out of a black mass. That's that four I'm up. Well, the Rock tries to do the people elbow to to Arn, just puts the elbow, the forearm up. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. All right. Well, that's all the questions. Like, there's a couple other ones, but we've sort of addressed them already. Yeah. Same here. Same here. All right. Cool. Right on. Well, I mean, it's fortuitous, anyways, because uh, Hilton's over there wrapping us up. But Hilton's right. not there. It's Bill this, Friendo's it's, on the line. It's, it's, These idiots the, have gone one twenty three. We've got we've got cues all over again. Just rephrased. It's pretty. It's much a brand new doing. adventure. It's just, they're wrapping us up. It's completely different than cues. Uh, the cues so, are yeah. to wrap it up, so it's the same thing. They're wrapping us up. They're going like this right here. Like Hilton's doing that right there. That's a cue. Or he's rooting for me. I don't. know. I can't really tell which one is it. Wrapping us up. Okay, it's wrapping us up. Like the beam, That's everybody. We'll talk to you guys later. Q. All right, goodbye. He everybody. just said like the beam. I don't know.